Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. Our week one April prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group is wildlife animals. I'm going to use some of this De La Rowney rough pressed watercolour paper. So that's cold pressed watercolour paper and it's A5 size. I'm also going to use some of these Faber Castell watercolour pencils and some of these Winsor Newton Copman watercolours. I will be using some other things as well and I'll bring them in later. So just going to show you here the great texture on this paper. But this project you could use uh, acrylics, you could use pens, you could basically use any supplies you want. And today I'm going to do something more as a tutorial, albeit I will be speeding it up, but a lot of people have asked me to do more kind of painting tutorials. So I'm going to go into a bit more detail about what I'm doing and why today. So I've got here a set of compasses. I'm actually going to use these to do a circle, but you don't need compasses. You could just draw around something if you want the kind of perfect circle. Really just showing you the types of things that can be done. And for my wildlife animal, I am picking a hare. So what I want to do is a hare that is gazing at the moon. And in particular, the April full moon, which is a pink moon. So all I've done here is to grab another sheet of paper to do a quick sketch. I just want to show you that doing a hair is really quite easy. So I've just done a kind of oval shape for the hair's head and then put in two long ears because of course hairs have very long ears. So this hair is going to be sitting because they are gazing at the moon. So I've drawn a back down there. I've put the very distinct shape of the leg in and the long foot. And now, there you go, I'm just defining that a little bit more. I'm bringing down the chest area and then the two front legs, which are very long as well. The paws on the front of a hair are quite small uh, and very small in comparison to their large back feet. So just going around that in a little bit more detail there, just really shaping up my sketch and putting an eye in. I just drew a very rough circle for the moon. So I want some hills in the background and I'll probably put some kind of grassy bits or maybe some flowers in there. I'm thinking too about maybe a branch coming over and sorry I've gone a little bit off the screen there, albeit in the final composition I don't actually include them. That was just at this point I was thinking how that might be. But all I've done here is to try and get my proportions right and all I'm going to do now is start to transfer them over onto my main piece of paper. So I've picked a wild hare because hares are very much associated with this time of year, uh, with spring, and they're very much associated with the full moon. And within the kind of Celtic culture, they are seen as very mysterious creatures, uh, sometimes as kind of shapeshifters. Personally, I love hares and I love rabbits. To me, they are, there are many, well, there are all the creatures of the world are great really, but hares and rabbits for me are the thing. So really just transferring my uh, drawing over there and, and, and just about done with that. So what I'll start to do now is to use some watercolours to kind of block in the main colours. Now I'm not going to list all the colours for you because unless you had the exact same set, you know, it, it, it wouldn't matter what you use. I've got two jars of water, one to wash my brush off in and the other to pick up clean water to go to new colours. I end up 
I just stick the paintbrush in any. But I've got some watercolour brushes here, but you know, you could use any type of brush. And as I say, you could do this with any medium. So I'm just going to pick some blues here. Now, although this is a nighttime scene, I do want to have a bit of colour in it and I want to make the sky very much a kind of dark blue colour. So I'm just going to mix some different blues together. I'll be doing several layers so initially it is just about getting some colour down. Now of course the other thing about hares and rabbits is they're also very much associated with Easter and of course Easter falls this month and it's interesting too or at least I think it is that of course Easter is determined in term terms of its date around the date of the full moon as well. Now I'm referring to this as being a pink moon. Uh, obviously it isn't really pink, it's, it gets that name because I think it's the phlox, one of the plants which is very pink, comes out at this time of year, certainly in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it has other names as well and it is sometimes referred to as the hair moon, although I have heard other people refer to May as being the hair moon. But you know, I'm not going to worry about any of that. I just want to do my pink moon and my moon gazing hair. For this month's prompt. So you see there that I picked up some red and I've started to mix that in with the blue just wanting to create a bit of purple. So just thinking about some of those wonderful colours that you see in the skies at times. And of course I'm not trying to make this realistic, it's very much kind of stylized shapes and colours. So I'm using uh, not too much water on my page today. Sometimes I'll put a lot of water down, not using too much. I, I was going to tape my page down to begin with to get a nice crisp white line around it and also to keep my paper flat but in the end I just decided to do it this way. Here I am with some more of that colour and just dabbing it on because I, I want to have uh, a kind of dappled effect. I don't want the sky to be totally flat. So that's why I'm incorporating different colours and also uh, I'm going to put in a bit more texture. And this is how I'm going to add in a bit of the texture by adding some, just some simple table salt to it. You could use sea salt, kosher salt. They will give a bigger effect, but this is a small piece of paper. So, you know, I just wanted some little effects on here. This is obviously something you can do if you want to do a snow scene, if you want to do a starry cosmos. And for me, this is just going to give the hint of there being some stars without it being too many. And that reacted really quickly. Uh, and better than I expected because my paper wasn't terribly wet. So at the moment the salt's still on there. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer but what I'm going to start to do meantime is to put some colour on my hair. So as I say a number of you have kind of asked me uh, over the years to do to do more painting tutorials and uh, I'd love to do full-time tutorials, you know, in, in, in normal time, but for these sorts of videos it, it's not feasible to always do that. But I have tried to keep my whole process in here today so that you can see it. Uh, I've speeded it up where I'm doing kind of repetitive stuff and even when it's n not fully speeded up it's still at double speed because, you know, painting takes a bit of time. So here I am, I'm just using some browns for my hair and again just kind of blocking in that colour. You'll see that I use the leg or sorry, I leave the leg to the far side meantime because I do want to make that a bit darker. But I don't want to put it in just now or it'll simply blend in with the paint that's already down. So there I am getting a bit of darker colour here because obviously uh, I want to make it again not look flat and because this is night time, because the moon will be glowing, there will be uh, 
light and shade. There'll be some dark patches and some lighter patches. Starting on the face now, trying to keep away from just under the head area when I put the, the colour on the head, just to make sure that it's not blending too much. But you'll see that every so often I take my brush anyway and just smooth out any hard lines. Now the ear to this side will show the inner part of the ear, so I will do that in a slightly lighter colour and the ear that's furthest away I'm making a little bit darker again just to reflect uh, the fact that there'll be shadows there. Now of course if you don't want to hear all the detail that I'm putting in and you do want to see it but at a greater speed you can just use the little gears mechanism and speed it up further. So here I want to put in a bit of the landscape. This just helps to ground the hair for me. So I've just put in some sort of gentle rolling hills and again I'm going to use a little bit of different colour here and there just to show that there is a bit of a distinction between the different hills. So just using some greens here to do the kind of foreground but also those back ground hills which are just a little bit darker and then what I will also do is to bring in some darker colour just this side of the hair again just to give the effect of a bit of shadow uh, given that the moon is on the other side of the hair. So I think I mainly used two sizes of brush here uh, a slightly larger one which obviously covers uh, more of an area faster and then just a slightly smaller one. I always find with watercolour brushes though that you can actually get some quite small points of detail even with a large brush. Now here I'm giving it a good dry. I'm not going too close to the area where the salt is. I've, although it looks as if my heat tool is very close to it, it's actually about a foot and a half away because I don't want the salt to be actually uh, kind of uh, ingrained to the paper. I did that once before with rock salt and it actually ended up leaving craters. It was quite a nice textured effect in its own right. But there I'm just wiping all the salt away, although later on I can still feel a little bit there, but I get as much off as I can. If it was rock salt, I'd put it into a separate jar and use it again. So just going for a slightly smaller brush here. Maybe I do use a third one. This is just to get into that second back leg there and just making that a little bit darker. And then just taking some of that dark brown and emphasising some of the other areas. So that back leg where it kind of bends under the, the chin. So just adding little bits of the darker colours here and there. Just emphasising that. And later on I'll put a slightly lighter patch on the hair's chest because often there will be slightly lighter areas especially underneath sometimes around the eyes and the tail as well can sometimes be a little bit lighter. So I'm now going to take the watercolour pencils and I like to work with watercolour paints but then to take the pencils to start to add even more details. So again I won't give you the exact colours. This is obviously a blue but it's actually a kind of blue with a kind of reddish tone to it as well. And what I'm really trying to do here is to start to add more detail to the sky. Watercolours will often dry lighter so I'm starting to darken up the sky a bit here. Now obviously if I go over the areas where the salt's been, which has taken it back to almost a white paper, it will actually start to colour some of those. That's fine. I know that's what's going to happen and I'm quite happy with that. There I'm just taking a little bit of black as well because again I don't want the colour to be totally flat. So I've got my big brush, I've got a bit more water on it and I'm just starting to work that in. 
and you'll see that I'm doing kind of little strokes, moving it about, uh, trying not to get any really hard lines with it, so I'm not applying a lot of water, but I'm just moving it about just to give that feel of kind of movement in the sky and depth of colour in the sky. So I put a hard line along there with the pencil, but you'll see that I start to, to smooth that out, to blend it out a bit. I don't want these colours totally blended together, but I do want it blended a bit more into the, the background there. Now I took some water from the dirty jar there. I was fine with that because it was mainly blue that was in there anyway. So, you know, whatever came out of there, it was going to be fine for this. And I like that although my moon started with a very perfect round circle, just by painting round it, it's actually got rid of that kind of perfectness about it. To me it feels better just because it's more my style. Just showing you a little still there of the, the way those colours are starting to look. But there's still a lot to be done on this yet. I say there's a lot to be done. I mean, I think I did this in just over an hour. So really for me, it's, it's quite a quick painting. So here I am now, I'm going to start working on the hair and I've just taken some different browns. I think it's a dark brown, a light brown and a fawn. And I'm just going to start to use these watercolour pencils to work in a little bit more detail as well. So along the base of the back foot there, just making it a little bit darker, just starting to distinguish the ears a little bit more under the chin. And I just work that in here and there. And again, I will just take some water on a brush and just start to work those out. And you see I start to pull it into the main body of the rabbit, so not just down its kind of spine area there. And again, what I'm trying to do here is to make sure that it doesn't appear just totally flat. So giving it almost a kind of rounded sense there, just trying to get some roundness into the body. And, you know, as I showed you at the beginning, this really is some quite basic shapes. Uh, I never like to say, really, this is easy because, you know, sometimes if I say something's easy, it can put people off if they feel that they can't do it. But there's a lot of people say they can't draw. So what I really wanted to demonstrate from this is, you know, these kind of stylized drawings like this, if you just think kind of basic shapes. So the head wasn't much more than an oval. The ears really aren't much more than an oval. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could do the body. You could do another big oval, then just pull the front legs out from that and work in the back leg. But, you know, I found it easier to draw the back down, draw the, the spine, then put in that large back leg and then the front legs from there. So quite basic shapes. So still working in some of that detail, getting a little bit of colour onto the, the fluffy tail. The other thing about rabbits and hares is we think of them sometimes as being this kind of round cotton wool ball type tail, but actually they, they, they can be quite long and uh, they, they kind of curl up their back. So going back to the hills now and starting to add some green watercolour pencil into there. So all the time just building up a little bit more detail as I go along. And I really enjoy working paintings like this. Just building up the layers, building up the interest, building up the depth. So again, using the green, but also adding in a bit of black there just to to darken it. So really, I'm, I'm mixing it straight onto the, 
the page there. So mixing the green and the black straight on the page. And in a moment I'll add a bit more water to my brush and I'll just take some of that colour and just work it between the foreground there to where the hills are further in the background. But I want to leave that middle area just that little bit lighter as if the moon is hitting that. So I'm now taking these Colero Pearl colours. So these are watercolours that are pearlized and I really want to use these for the moon. I'm going to use moon gold and sterling silver. I'm going to use both of those. So what I'm going to do, if you've got these paints, then the best thing to do is to add some water to it, whichever colours you want to use, but then leave it for a few minutes because they come lo become lovely and creamy if you let that water sit on them. If you try to paint with them right away, uh, there's very little comes off them, so do leave them. I've taken a bit of red there. Now, although, as I said, the pink moon isn't really a pink moon, I just want to give it a little tint of pink. So I'm just going to mix that in with my silver and my moon gold. Uh, it's stylized, it's artistic license. It won't come out terribly pink, but it just does have that little hint of it. So just trying to pick up plenty of colour there since I'm mixing it in. And it's a kind of rose gold that that's come out mainly just now, but I will be putting some more colour on it later. And when the light hits this, it will just make it look as if the moon is glowing. So getting that colour on, trying to make sure I haven't left any white bits, not concerned that it's not a perfect round shape. Now taking a bit of silver and just going over that again and just kind of dabbing it a little bit more this time. I'm not looking to fill the whole thing in. Uh, of course the moon, when we look at it, we can see the craters etc. So just trying to create again a little bit that kind of texture that you see when you're, when you're moon gazing. So that's still wet, uh, but what I'm going to do now is to take these Derwent Colour Soft pencils. So these are colouring pencils, they have a bit of a, a kind of waxy feel to them. Now because my paper is textured, it's not a hot press smooth paper, this is going to give me some really again, in my opinion, interesting effects. So I'm now going to go back to my hair just to, to let the moon dry. And I'm just going to start to add in some detail with these pencils. Now, for the most part, I will not be blending these in. But what you can do is to take, for example, a white pencil and you can use it to blend in. You can get blending pencils and I will take a blending stump at one point and use that a little bit. But this is just all about trying to add in just a little bit more detail. So again, making some areas darker, bringing in some lighter areas as well. And again, I think I've got a dark brown, a light brown, and it's a kind of fawn colour. And I also bring out the white. So just working into those areas where there'll be a bit of shadow. And now I've actually sharpened my pencil because I want to go up to the head and I just wanted it to be a little bit sharper just to get in some of that detail. I will do a little bit more work on the eye in a little while. I'm not putting a lot of detail into it, but the thing to know about hare's eyes and rabbit's eyes, uh, most anyway, that their, their eye is quite dark, they do have a pupil, but actually most of the eye that you'll see is is brown in colour, very dark. Though, you know, I've seen rabbits with blue eyes. And of course, uh, you get the rabbits that have the, the kind of white eye with, with the red. 
So there you go, you can see I put in the, the dark pupil but also coloured most of the eye brown. So again, just going under the, the kind of chin area, under the mouth area there and trying to get in a little bit of detail to get the kind of the shape and the sense that the rabbit's rounded, it's, it's not flat. And when I'm working on something like this, I mean, I, I do a lot of work that's quite abstract and that doesn't require a lot of detailed work on it in this sense. You know, I might put in a lot of texture, I might put in a lot of layers, but this is something that I also enjoy working on, where I'm actually working on something quite detailed and, and more contained in a sense. Adding a slightly reddish terracotta colour there, coming in with the brown over that. But I could sit and do this sort of detail for hours and hours and hours, but I've contained myself today to, to try and make it of a length that people wouldn't hopefully get too bored with. So there I go, adding in some darker colour again. So you would see I vary between the, the kind of three uh, tones, the dark, the medium and the light. Bringing in a the white there, just adding a little bit of white. Again, just kind of feeling that the moon would be highlighting certain areas of the hair. I'm going to go back and add a bit more colour in the tail. And then blending it a little bit with the white. And I noticed when I was out the other day that some of the baby hairs and baby rabbits are, are starting to appear. So that's wonderful. I love to see them. So not putting too much detail on the front paws, just giving a little hint at their shape. And you see I just keep going back and forward and back and forward, just adding where I think it needs it. So I've taken a slightly different colour for the hills now, just to try and again, just give a little bit of definition. Bringing that colour down, I can't remember what this is called, I think it could be a lichen green, and using it kind of on the side, and you see there, because the paper's textured, it's giving it that lovely effect, you know, it almost looks as if it's, if, as if uh, the, the hair is sitting in a field, and the field, you know, has a dirt, it's textured. Adding a little bit to the hills, Again, just picking up a little bit of that natural texture that the paper is giving me. Dabbing off the moon there because it's still ever so slightly wet. So, what I want to do now is to create a bit of a moon glow. And all I've done is to take my white colouring pencil and I am literally just going round it. You could do this with a white watercolour and then take a paintbrush and blend it out a little bit, but I want those kind of lines to be seen, which is why I've used this, which will, I'm, I will go round it a little bit later, but for the most part, I'm trying to get those lines to give it that kind of halo effect. And I work away at that for a little while and later on I will add in another couple of colours to that as well. Of course there is always a danger of overworking it. I don't think I did today but uh, I have done that before with other things. Using that white pencil just to do a little bit of blending. It's hard to see on the screen but it does just kind of blend some of the pencil that's there a little bit more. So starting to think now about do I want to add in other things? Do I want to put in those kind of tree branches? The reason I, I was going to do that was I felt that I could put some little leaves on the tree branches to show that it's, it's spring. 
Uh, but I take another pencil instead, I think this was an indigo, just to do a little bit more colour, a few more rings around the moon, because by this point I'm starting to think, I don't think I want to actually put the trees in. I think I was really just into to playing with the moon at this stage. Back to the white, doing a bit more, which kind of blended in the indigo. And what I'm going to do now is to take some of the silver and just go over the moon a bit. I liked that it had that slightly pink colour, but I didn't want it to be mistaken for the sun. So I'm adding in a little bit more of the silver just to calm that down ever so slightly. Just knock back the kind of gold a bit. And then once I've done that, I decide just to add some tiny little bits of the silver to the actual hair, just to make sure there's a little bit of reflection. And I'm just thinking one of the things that I haven't done is to add the whiskers to the hair. So I will do that next time. And I will try and put the whiskers on for the thumbnail that I do for this. How silly of me, forgetting the whiskers. I will possibly add them with a fine tipped black pen, but then add a little bit of white to it as well, just so again it's looking like the, the moon, the light of the moon hitting it. And you can see there that uh, it was looking nice and shiny. So, wondering here, I do want to add something else in, and all I'm going to do is to take some a couple of green pencils and make this look as if it's a little bit like grass. So I'll do a light green, I'll do a dark green, and then I'll even add in a little bit of black. So very much just small strokes around about the rabbit and again making it look as if he's maybe sitting in a, a field. This does not need a lot of detail but it just does add that little bit more kind of interest and texture. As I say I was going to add in the kind of tree branches and maybe some flowers but Two reasons. One, I just kind of got to the point where I thought if I start on that, then I'm going to add at least probably another half hour or more to this video. And I thought it's probably getting a bit long now anyway, because there was more work I wanted to do on the sky. So again, I'm just taking a variety of coloured pencils. Uh, that could be the indigo. Uh, I take a little bit of black and I just start to darken up the sky even more. And you'll see that I'm using the pencil on the side. So I'm getting a kind of broader area of the pencil down. But again, I'm picking up the lovely texture of the paper by, by doing it this way. So I like to try and make around the edges of the sky that bit darker and just a little bit around the hair, just so that the hair stands out that little bit more. There I've got a kind of purple, just putting that in as well. So just building up layer upon layer upon layer. And you know, it's starting to look quite different now from that initial first sketch. Going back again, adding more. As I say, this is where there's a danger of sometimes overworking things, but I felt it was okay today. I didn't feel that I'd, I'd got to that point. Just got a dark grey here, just adding that in again, just so I can give a little bit more definition to the shape of the hair against that background. So here's the paper stump that I'm just going to use. I don't particularly like these. Uh, I don't like the sound 
or the sensation of them on the paper, but they did help me just blend it a little bit here and there, just to smudge it out a little bit in places, and I think it did help it. You can still see the salt texture in the background, some of it's disappeared, but there's still a bit there. And then just going over the kind of grass and the hair. So, of course, Nina will also have a video this week, and as always, I will leave a link to her video below. And if you just hang on a bit longer, I will also let you know who has won uh, the Flower Power Love and Peace cards that I, I made. What I did was I used a programme that pulls out, randomly pulls out winners from the comments, but I'll say a bit more about that in just a moment. So, you know, some final touches here. As I've said several times already, I could play about at this stage for a very long time. Just emphasising there that the front of the rabbit is just that little bit whiter and I'm just doing that by adding a little bit darker colour to the side and almost adding in some little individual hairs on the fur of the, the hair. So I do hope you've liked this project. I will put an image in towards the end of the video. My filming camera doesn't always show colour uh, so good as an actual still image. But there we have it. So a few weeks ago I made a kind of mini master board which I then cut up into ATC sized cards. And these were, I called these flower power cards, love and peace, just really to spread a bit of love and peace in the world. So I have drawn three winners and that will come up in just a second. And those winners are, and I hope I pronounce names correctly, Nicola King, Darla Stroud, Brenda Myers, and I've picked three YouTubers, Sirius Hecka, Waste Some Time with Maggie and Mona L Creates. And I'll leave links to their channels below. So if you all send me your contact details, I will put a card in the post to you. So as I say, I hope you've enjoyed today's project and I hope you'll give it a go. Let me know if you like this type of kind of tutorial style video. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please do take care. Bye for now.